Hello everyone. Today I'm doing a little project in my garage. The problem is I need an outlet on the back wall where I have all my tools and everything and my air compressor because it would be an it would be ideal to have an outlet right about here. So I've already started the work because there's an outlet that I installed right here, but it's a low voltage outlet, so and it's shared with the uh, the switch for the outside light. So I really don't want to use that to run my air compressor and stuff like that. So I've already started the process. I'm mounting a box right here that I'm going to put a regular outlet in. And then I've already bent the conduit, 90 degree bend right there. And then bent it outwards right there a little bit, bent it back in to go around the other conduit. And then um, it's not anchored over here yet. So that's why it's going at an angle because it's not anchored yet. And then it's going to go over here behind this other conduit and then it's going to be tapped in right here at this box. Now, when you're actually making when you're actually making the connections, you should always have the power turned off to avoid the risk of getting shocked. Now when testing these wires, you obviously want to find out which is your hot wire. So an easy way to do that is to use a digital multimeter such as this Craftsman I have. And you can actually put one prong in each of these, you see how these, this outlet is like the really old fashioned kind with a two prong, which I'm going to end up replacing anyway. And I'm going to put um, a three prong, maybe even a GFCI in there, which is a ground fault circuit interrupter. And yes, I do electrical work as well. To see which wire is your hot wire, then the best way to do that is to take your ground lead, which is the black one here, put that on on a known ground, which is going to be right here. Obviously, it has to be an unpainted portion of it because you know paint acts as an insulator to an electrical circuit. See right here, 120.7 volts. So that right there tells you that that wire is definitely your hot wire. Now I can remove my leads and. What I'm going to do is I've already knocked out the hole in here. I'm going to put my half inch conduit right here. I'm going to measure it first exactly to after I get that one anchored to the wall right there. Then when it's a proper height, which is about um, three inches past this, this line right here where that brick line is, then um, I'm going to measure it because when you're using different conduit benders, different ones have different measurements. Like for example, this one. This is meant for only half inch conduit. Pick this up at Menards for not even 30 bucks. Now this part here, when you put conduit in there, this particular um, manufacturer two and a half inches back, exactly two and a half inches back from this point right here. That's where the bend starts. So then you're gonna you're pretty much gonna get a two and a half inch gain so you have to calculate it based on that. Like I said last night was my first time doing this and it turned out pretty decent so and um as you see I bought plenty of extra conduit just in case I messed it up that way I could afford to mess up a few of them if I'm practicing. See when you're using these, you have to use these kind of um, little fasteners to hold the conduit to the wall because um, obviously it's brick and you have to use uh, good anchors and screws as well. Now also when doing this, it's good to have a mallet as well. After you drill a hole, then you want to hit it, knock this um, anchor in the rest of the way. And it's good to use a rubber mallet instead of a hammer, that way you don't damage the brick. 
So now that's the top one that's in place. Now I'm going to put this up here to get an idea of where the bottom one needs to be. Using my Makita drill, of course. There it's marked. Now I can move this out of my way. And I can drill it. I can drill it the rest of the way. Keep in mind, it's don't have to drill it all the way through, but it needs to be far enough so that the anchor will go in. And this seems like it should be far enough. I'm using my impact driver to drill these screws in. And you don't need to put, put them in all the way until you get both of them in. See, it's a nice even line all the way through. Right behind that other conduit, right here. Now, I'm going to use a coupler to join the other, the final piece of conduit there. And then it's gonna make one more 90 degree bend down to the box. And now, I have to go to the store and pick up a couple more outlets. Now, because of the fact that I need to bend to a curve, at 48 inches from the box going up and this bender it has um, a two and a half inch gain so 48 minus two and a half is 45 and a half so that's what I'm going to start bending at 45 and a half and we're bending conduit have an even amount of pressure steady pressure through the whole bend so you don't get a kink in it. And let's see how this looks. Now, as you can see, the final bend has been made as well as the final cut. And there is the coupler right up there. Only thing I gotta do now is anchor these to the wall and run the wires through. And then when dealing with wiring, which I do all the time anyway, it's good to have one of these things right here so you can put your reels of wire on it and obtain your wire pretty easily instead of holding it and unwinding it and all the other mess. Now I've started running the wiring through the uh, conduit. I had to take the last piece of conduit off um, because of the fact that I couldn't get the wiring through a 90 degree bend without having it on the floor. And then to um, facilitate that, use this stuff right here by Klein Tools called Premium Synthetic Wax. You put that on the wires before you try and run them through the conduit. And then, um, see I took the conduit loose and then I have it still attached to the wiring right here on the, on the reel. And then after I run it through, it's already gotten through the 90 degree bend right there at that corner. It's already gotten through there. Now, the wiring I'm guessing is probably right at this coupler right here which I may have to take that loose if I get past there and if I have a problem getting through this 90 degree bend right here I'm about to take that last piece of loose and then it'll be home free from there alright as you can see 
the wiring has been run through the conduit right here and you see it comes out the other side right here like it's supposed to and you can still and you can still see the um the lubricant on the wires which is good now you see everything's intact right here you can still see lube on these wires too and then I'll just cut the wires right here and then send it right through down here into the box and I'll replace the outlets and everything will be finished and I'll test it out now when you cut your wires at the end of the conduit you always want to have I've got about 10 inches of wire here both of them which is good and then I've also on the other side you see I got a good 8 to 10 inches of wire there you always want to have extra because if you cut yourself short you cannot put connectors on these wires unlike car wiring um, you cannot put connectors on this and have it inside this conduit here because it'll come loose and then you risk um, blowing fuses as well as setting the house on fire when you do haphazard work like that so it's totally unacceptable and totally against the national electric code so you always want to give yourself extra wire to work with I've decided I'm gonna add one more outlet you see I have the first one right here and then this one's gonna be over about another five feet and it'll be right here that way the air compressor can be plugged in right here and all I got to do is um, run the conduit right to it no bends or anything like that and now I've already ran the conduit the wiring's already ran I um, wired up the outlet this one right here conduit is ran over here wiring is ran right here I just gotta put the outlet in this box right here and then you see there's another set of wires right here because that's coming from all the way over here and down to right there and then of course that two prong outlet is going to be replaced and it's going to be two it's going to be um two pairs of outlets there the three prong outlets now the job is complete everything looks great Got the four outlets right there you already know the conduit goes all around I've got a low amperage output or low amperage outlet right here and then you know the conduit comes over here and comes down on the right side of the window and I have an outlet here and another one here and I spaced them so that way they stick out on both sides of my toolbox that way my toolbox is not blocking them and let's see if it has to make sure everything works right now I'm about to plug in my air compressor and turn it on pretty large air compressor right here I'm gonna turn it on Now I'm going to plug in my um, heater into the other outlet and make sure it works. And it works. I'm testing the outlets, verify that they work. Got my Makita electric drill plugged here. It definitely works here. Yeah. And all four outlets work. And it's safe to say this outlet works because this is the one that the heater's plugged into. Well, let's just try the other one right here. 
try my drill here. Finally here.